Why are so many people joining ISIS when their demands and teachings are so far away from Islamic teaching? This is a very good question. Um, there are different levels and different types of people that are joining ISIS. And in this, allow me to, to be uh, politically incorrect uh, where I have to be. There are people that have suffered directly the consequences of, uh, of Western activities, Western acts, Western attacks. There are people who have lost uh, loved ones, dear ones, jobs, families, limbs, everything because of some act carried out by the Western country. I don't pretend to support everything the West does. I don't think, I don't think anyone really can. So don't get me wrong, I'm all for uh, national security and, and all of that stuff. But I do not support Western, you know, every single decision made, made by the Western world. And I have the right to have that uh, opinion living in a free society. So there are people who have suffered immensely at the hands of Western countries. They've lost a great deal. And so this is the top tier of ISIS. That's their motivation. They want to strike back. Then there are those who have suffered indirectly. Their countries have been affected. Their relatives have been affected. Their jobs have been affected. And they say, you know what, we've got nothing to lose. We've already lost everything at the hands of those people. We're not going to get anything back from those people. Simple example. After America bombed the smithereens out of Iraq a few years ago, you know, Saddam Hussein's time, when they left, they left Iraq in a state of internal war, civil war for four years. There was no one really looking after them. What do you think the people who were left there in that situation thought about America after that? Well, not a heck of a lot. They're your recruits right there. So they may not have lost their lives, but their country, to them, their country was just torn apart. It was destroyed, it was left in, in pieces, and there was no one there to pick them up. That's your second tier. Then there's your third tier of people who are sympathizing with tier one and tier two. They say, you know what, that really shouldn't have happened. You have all the right to be upset. We're upset. And you know what, we're going to join you and support you in this cause. That's your third tier. These three make up the most powerful uh, base and foundation of this group. They are extremely, extremely motivated. It's 100% ideological. The ideology is, is rooted in a great deal of grief and anger and frustration. Then you have this fourth group, which consists of a diverse range of people. Anyone from some, a wannabe gangster who wants to hold a gun, you know, and fire it at people, to someone who's just looking for action and adventure, to someone who has no idea about Islam and is just looking for a place where they think they'll be able to practice the full Islam, to uh, people who think that they will get just a life of decency and, and and be able to avoid, you know, uh, an environment of immodesty. So that's your fourth tier of people. These are the soft. This is the soft, you know, uh, uh, base of, of, of this group. So people are joining this group for different reasons. Some people feel they're very justified, and there are some people that are going. They're just on. It's a gamble. Maybe it'll work out for us. Maybe it won't. And um, uh, then there, there amongst this last group are those who are tricked into, into, into feeling that, yeah, this is, this is something really, really great. you got recruiters there telling them, yeah, this is really, really fantastic. Now we're getting stories of people who are trying to get out of there, stories of people who have experienced stuff, and they're saying, well, you know what, it's not as glorious as it was made out to be. So that's what, that's what my understanding is as to why people are joining them.